Sending a gift to our donor or partner at year end is an important part of our total fundraising and development plan. Keep watching this video for the most creative ways to thank donors at year end. There are two times of the year when thanking our donor or partner is especially important. Year end to highlight the year's worth of giving to our organization and hopefully after a year end gift. There are five strategies to employ in thanking donors or partners. The who, the when, the why, the what, and the how. Let's get started. Strategy number one, who will you thank? While it's important to appreciate all your partners, there are times it is simply impractical to reach out to everyone, especially when it involves not only sending a card, letter, or gift, but also calling or meeting someone. This is a great time of the year to do an all-play email, e-blast, or social media post to everyone on your list saying how much you appreciate their partnership, whether they give or not. This would include not only non-donors, somebody who's never given to your organization, but also lapsed and lost donors, somebody who has not given in the last 18 to 24 months. Then, it's very important to reach out to anyone who has given a gift in the last year. Depending on the size of the gift, these people could get a card at Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah with a generic message. This giving level to which I'm suggesting would be $1 to $499. If you have a larger organization, it could be $1 to 999. Anyone who's given a current gift of $500 or more for smaller organizations or 1000 or more for larger should have their own individual plan or strategy. Those individuals should at a minimum get a phone call and have a voicemail left if they can't be reached live and or small gift that is reflective of the mission of your vision. We'll address those options soon. For individuals raising their own funding, such as missionaries, annual gifts of a thousand could and should warrant special gifts for their organizations. Gifts of five thousand or more could or should warrant special gifts. As with appreciation of smaller gifts, we'll address options soon. Strategy number two, when to begin thanking. Timing is very important at year end because so much revolves around your year end appeal or appeals. Some organizations do multiple appeals at year end. Our organization is one of those. Most appeals are sent the first few weeks of November to arrive on or around the Friday the week before Thanksgiving, around the giving time of year. The second, if you're doing one, arrives around the 15th of December. Sometimes the second one is a more personalized appeal to the critical few, the 20% of the donors who give 80% of your income. If you can only do one appeal, then opt for the November appeal time and split between a dear friend letter and a personalized letter when segmenting your group. However, I've found that many organizations are late in their planning and send their one appeal just after Thanksgiving. It's not the worst, but what's missed is that giving mood or atmosphere associated with Thanksgiving. Email appeals are done a few times in between. To some, this may sound like overkill, but it really works for organizational fundraising. It keeps us on people's minds in the midst of all year-end traffic. For thank you emails to the entire mailing list, it might be nice to have those arrive just before that mailing or right around Thanksgiving. For cards and gifts, it's best that they arrive the first few weeks of December to land in between the two appeals. And even if you don't do two appeals, that's still a good time before people have made their year-end giving decisions. Remember, the other important thank you is the response to a year-end gift. Once again, depending on the gift size, those gifts under $499 should get a printed thank you note with a live signature if possible. Those gifts over $500 should get a handwritten thank you note. For gifts to individuals or missionaries, it's more appropriate to call to thank for a gift. For gifts of $500 or $1,000 or more to an organization as a whole, a call should be required. Larger gifts at a higher level may require a visit. Strategy number three. What is the content? The content of the thank you, e-blast, note, call, or visit is so important. Any good thank you should always include an appreciation for either a year of giving, if the person gave one or more times of the year, or a year of partnership if they were on the mailing list but had not given that year or in prior years. After a paragraph of thanks for their gift, then there should include one paragraph story of a life that was changed as a result of their gift or partnership. If possible, the name of the person should be used. First name at a minimum and last name if appropriate. If the name can't be used for security reasons, then use a pseudonym. 
Something is better than nothing. Remember, the idea is connecting them with a person. People give to people justified by the cause. Seeing their giving or partnership made a difference will be motivating and no one is more apt to give another gift than someone who's satisfied with their last gift. Then close with a small glimpse of the future, a new project or program or effort, perhaps related to the year-end cause concept. For faith-based organizations, sh share this as a prayer request. It works well. Putting in a thank you makes them feel like insiders and closely tied to the success or future of your organization. Strategy number four, what to give. It seems the biggest challenge for individuals or organizations raising money is finding the gifts that are appropriate for everyone or a select few. It's important to first decide whether this gift is for everyone or most donors, or if it's for the critical few. Let's start with the critical few and work down. Gifts to the critical few vary greatly, but tend to land within the $15 to $25 range per person. In researching ideas for this video, I heard from a good number of people, and I want to thank each and every one who helped. Gifts varied from the expensive, a box of pears from Harry and David, to the moderately priced Chapel Hill toffee or counterculture coffee. One person remarked, it's, a very, it's very famous in the coffee world, but started in our area of North Carolina. The same person sent me a link to a very useful booklet entitled Your Ultimate Local Durham Gift Guide for Gifts Under $25. I thought that was especially helpful and saw a number of great gifts from the local region. This couple serves their nonprofit in the Raleigh-Durham area, so sending something from their local area to those helping them was smart and connected them to the area. I have to believe that there are other communities that offer the same kind of booklet. I've mentioned a few times in my videos how my wife and I would send ornaments from the White House Historical Society during our 30 years of nonprofit service in the Washington, D.C. area. Some donors have shown us pictures of their Christmas tree fully adorned with 25 years of collectible ornaments. And don't you know who they're thinking about around the Christmas season, and especially when it comes to sending a year-end gift. Another person mentioned sending syrup from a maple syrup farm that was well loved and respected. She shared that they got the farm to give a group discount and mail directly to a select group of donors, leaving the labor to the syrup farm. Brilliant. The same person mentioned that in their world travels, they would look for unique gifts from unique locations, handwoven bookmarks, unique Christmas ornaments, etc. Another mentioned giving books, which is not only simple, but inexpensive. This is a person working for a faith-based organization and recommended two books, one related to the importance of giving entitled Gospel Patrons by John Reinhardt and the second, The Praying Life by Paul Miller. I'll include the link in the description for both books below. If you aren't part of a faith-based organization, I'm sure there are books related to your mission and written by perhaps your founder that might be appropriate gifts. The best books have some connection to your organization. I've mentioned in the past sending candy at Valentine's Day that said, we're sweet on you. That was very well received. Corny, but well received. It seems the more creative and unique, the better. Gifts to all donors generally are much less expensive, $1 less, and include bookmarks, thin, almost paper-like ornaments, magnets, or photo magnets from the staff or location where your organization serves, as examples. How much you spend is very important. For the critical few, you can get away with gifts in the $15 to $25 range, but not too expensive. You'll hear about it from the most frugal donors if your gift smacks of extravagance, but you'll also hear about it if your gift is seen as too cheap or crass. Finding the balance is never easy, but you have to try. If your gift is a little more extravagant, you might consider getting it donated or discounted from the manufacturer or from a donor, and then tell the recipient that the gift was made possible through the generous gift of a manufacturer or a donor. That's important. Strategy number five, how to give. Now, you might be thinking, well, how else would you give the gift? By mailing it. Well, actually, there's many ways to give the gift. Yes, mailing it from your office or headquarters is always an option, or having it sent directly from the manufacturer, as I mentioned before. But hand delivering is very special. A gift to a local critical few donor is a nice touch. Hand delivered to the donor or to an assistant adds a personal touch point to the process, especially if it buys you time with the donor. And delivering a gift often buys you at least a little time. I've had staff tell me that they tried for years to get a minute with a donor with no success until they brought a gift. 
The assistant felt so beholding that they got the representative a few minutes with the donor. I even heard of a representative who brought the assistant a gift for their child, a soccer ball signed by an elite soccer player for her young son. The assistant found some time in her boss's schedule soon after. He didn't do it for that reason. He had genuine interest in the young son, but it was a nice approach. I hope you found these creative ways to thank a year-end helpful, not only for the last few months of the year, but also for year-round. I've mentioned before, but I've developed quite a few videos related to year-end. Watch them all using the playlist listed above. I plan to release more this year. To not miss any valuable tips, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the next video is released. And don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there was a creative option you especially like or have something I can share with others later. Remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or on Instagram at DevEffectivenessStrategies or you always email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.